Hi. I want to give you. I want to create a few little tutorials for some little so, for all these little software things that we'll be doing during the semester. I mean, during the semester we'll be graphing data on a pretty regular basis. Probably many more of the weeks we probably will wind up graphing data more than the weeks that we won't be graphing data. So I want to go ahead and make sure that you're familiar with the basic aspects of graphing in Excel. So I found that some students. Are very proficient at it and some students have a, a few little problems doing this. What I'm going to do is whenever we do a lot of these experiments I'll be, we'll be reading the reading all the values on one of these microplates like we did for the first experiment and whenever we read those out read those you'll be getting a spreadsheet that'll have all the observance values in them uh, much like we see on the screen right now and this first block with the dilutions you did sort of on the plate and this second block here in green is the set of data that you made the serial dilutions in, in a tube and then added the, added the samples to a plate. Uh, this is just two different ways to do it. I want you to be able to compare those two. Well, the first thing I need to do is I want to go ahead and determine, get my X values. Those are the ones we determined. I told you that in the, in the protocol, we know that the most concentrated sample was 1% and we diluted everything twofold. So I'll highlight that area, divide it by two, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just copy these down. So we know there were half a percent, a quarter percent, one eighth percent, and one sixteenth of a percent. Now what I'll do is We'll go ahead and when we generate replicates of data points and if we take the mean of those, the average, we kind of sort of minimize, try to minimize a little bit of the error of the method. So here what I'll do is I'll put an equal sign in here and then type average, double click here, and then I'll highlight those three values and hit enter. And so we now have that mean and what I'll do here is I'll just copy that down for all those values. And so these were done on the plate. So I'll go ahead and label this column on plate. Now the next set of data was in tubes. So I'll just go ahead and put the headers in tubes so I know what it is. And I will go through and do the same thing I did before. Equals and then start typing the function name. Double click on it. Go ahead and highlight these values hit enter, so we have the mean of that value, and then what I'll do is I'll copy these down. Now we have all the data that we were ready to generate a graph. We have the 1%, we have the concentrations of the sub, of uh, the material, and we have the observance value, so we'll be able to plot the concentration on the x-axis and the observance on the y-axis. So what I'll do here is I'll highlight this area right here, Go to insert, and I will pick a chart, and I will pick XY scatter because it's the one that it's easiest to use. These kind of data. Move this over here so I can see the data. What I'll do first here is I'll, I'll right click on one and I'll click add trend line. And what a trend line does, it'll be do a linear, linear least squares fit. And I'll go ahead and display that equation on the chart and display the R squared. And the R squared gives us an idea of the precision and how close the data points are together. And so we'll go ahead and click the little X and go away. And we have the equation here. And I'll move this over to here. So we now have the, what the, the fitted line is. Now I want to go ahead and I want to add the other data in. And what I'll do here is I will select the data. I will click add. The series name is dilution in tubes. The X values I will go ahead and highlight right here. Hit enter. And the Y values, click here, and these are right here. Like those, hit enter, 
you see it's on the graph again and click OK. Now we'll go ahead and I noticed that um, for things in the future that I'll show you a little bit in a minute, uh, we might want to go ahead and change this series one to um, on plate. Click OK. And you'll see why I did that in a minute. So we now have the, we have the data, and now let's go ahead and right click on the orange dots. Head trend line, do the same thing again. Display the equation on the chart and display the R squared value on the chart. And what I'll do here is I'll move this over here so I know which one it is. What I do is I kind of, as I know them and I'm graphing them, I'll put the equations where they'll, I'll know which one's which. Now, uh, one of the things they will do is I will probably, for, for notes, I might leave a chart of results. I will go ahead and click in here and go to add chart element. I will Click Axis Titles, Horizontal. And I'll go add Axis Titles in the vertical, I'll type. Six twenty nanometers, I think is what it was. So I'll have that. So I'll have these in here. Now another element is it, you have a graph here. It's kind of hard to tell which one, what they, the different ones are. So I really like adding legends on. So I'll go to legend, and I always like to add it to the right side. And here we can go ahead, and now you see that the headers wind up being listed here, and we have a graph here. And what I'll do here is I will go ahead and I don't like to see the near least fit things in there. So I'll just go ahead and do something like this and kind of edit that out. Here we have the two equations in the graph. And if you go ahead and put this into your little report, um, that'll be good. And that's all I expect. Uh, hopefully this little tutorial helps you understand how to make simple graphs in Excel. We will see you later. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Thanks. Bye.